Welcome into Terrier Vision. I'm Mark Hauser from the McKenzie Arena here in Chattanooga, where tonight, after 32 games, we're going to find out if the Wofford Terriers can advance to the NCAA tournament for a second consecutive year. It's the finals of the SOCON tourney as the Terriers take on the College of Charleston Cougars. Wofford, during the regular season, was beaten twice by Charleston, once at the Carolina First Arena and once at the Benjo in Sparta. Can the Terriers turn the tables tonight and win the tournament championship? Well, here are the highlights. Brad Losing, left wing Jamar Diggs, Wofford with the ball in the front court, down one. Diggs drives right side of the lane, hesitation move, runner off the glass, good. On the right wing, Brad Losing for Wofford, dishes away far sideline to Diggs. Diggs works the floor with the right hand, guarded by Donovan Monroe, bounces right side of the lane to Dahlman, about 12 feet from the rim. He's guarded by Wiedemann, in the paint to Losing, who hits a right-handed floater. Losing cutting open, Cougars up two. Lawrence, high left side with his dribble, guarded there by Parker. Now he picks up his dribble and hands it away to Goudlock, who will drive with the right hand into the paint. Jump pass, right corner, Wiggins, ball fake, gets by Johnson. Pull up 13-footer, no good, rebound, Monroe. Nathan Parker blocked the shot. Here come the Terriers, three on two. Diggs gonna drive all the way, clutches and scores off the window. Andrew Lawrence, high left side, works with the right hand down the lane. Diagonal bounce pass to Wiedemann, who loses it off his knee. And Kevin Giltner picks it up off the floor for the Terriers. That was a good pass. Wiedemann couldn't handle it. Now Rundles bounces low to Dahlman. He turns and scores with the left paw off the window. Left corner, Johnson, top of the key, digs. Slides left with his dribble, bounces in on the block to Johnson. Crosses over, puts up a hook shot, and it muscles over the front of the rim and in. We have reached the half here in Chattanooga. SOCON Tournament Finals. It's been a good one to this point. This Hall with a mid-range jumper, 36 to 30. Cougars lead it, 18 minutes to play. Tim Johnson, top of the key, drives by Hall and dunks! Tim Johnson drives the lane and finishes with a right-handed jam. 16.40 to play, Wofford with the ball down three, right wing. Losing against the man-to-man, -man, bounces in on the block to Dahlman, posting up Wiedemann, dribbles out to the wing, now shovels left wing to Diggs. Diggs, top of the key, drives right side of the lane, hesitates against Wiedemann, double team, bounces inside to Tim Johnson, who dunks again. Tim Johnson with another jam, it's 40-39, to 39. Charleston. What a pass by Diggs against the double team. Now Gadlock runs the paint, right baseline, Carlton misses an 18-footer. Uncontested weak side rebound for Diggs and the Terriers. I think he'll give that shot to James Carlton. Diggs splits defenders, drives all the way, finger roll good. Jamar getting to the rim with a right-handed finger roll, Wofford up a point, 41 to 40, 15, 38 to go. Under eight minutes, Terriers with the ball, leading 54, 53, Charleston man defense, Losing drives into the lane, left wing now, Parker. High left side with a one-handed pass to Rundles, guarded by Wiggins, slides right off a high screen from Johnson, gonna take a three, got it! Cameron Rundles has 16, 11 and a half, Wofford up four. Largest lead of the night for the Terriers. Losing brings it into the front court. He has it between the circles. Drives left side of the lane. Scoops. Scores. Ball hung up on the back iron forever. Front court Losing. Charleston will not foul. The Wofford Terriers are about to go back to the big dance. Three, two, one. Let's have a party. Cinderella's back, baby. We're back. We're back. Um, a, you know, a big applause from our program to, uh, to the Cougars um, who had a great run at it and um, played so well uh, tonight. Um, great competition against a great coach and great players. Um, go in four at the half and uh, down four at the half. Um, Hadn't played real well. I thought we'd really battled and competed defensively. But we came back in the second half, and boy, we put some things together. And um, guys like these two guys uh, beside me here make me look like I know what I'm doing. 
Uh, they were exceptional, as was Tim Johnson, as was Nathan Parker again tonight on that stage. Um, his, um, his, uh, you know, his athleticism. Uh, it was a go get the ball off the rim kind of night, and uh, he did that. He did that really well. Uh, and I think 42 guy from the uh, sprawling metropolis of Bram just walked in and. Uh, he had another pretty good night for us as well. Uh, so we are tickled to death uh, to go back to back in this league. Any league is, uh, is beyond difficult. Um, and we did it, and we are beyond excited. OK. At this time, we'll open things up for questions. In the front. Uh, coach. Uh, Early, it, it seemed to take a little while to get a little settled in on the shooting, but at the free throw line, I think you guys hit your first 20. How crucial was it to, to keep knocking those shots down up there? Really huge, huge. Big story of the game. You know, uh, we have a, a statistic that is important to us, uh, and we want to make more than our opponent takes. Uh, and to do that tonight, 22 of 24, that's unbelievable. And they were 13 of 20. Um, you know, that, that comes from having a, a very good uh, you know, interior presence in Johnson, Martin, Dahlman. And it comes from having guys that get, can get to the paint off the bounce as uh, Jamar and Cameron uh, and others uh, can do. Uh, big story of that game. Big story of that game, getting to the line. And not just getting to the line, but uh, getting them in a basket once you're there. Corner, David. Uh, Jamar, describe for me how you guys were able to come from three, four, five down to go up seven. I mean, we just fought. You know, they're a good team and they're going to make a run, but we went into halftime knowing that we hadn't played that well. We struggled a little bit on offense, dribbling the ball too much, not getting into Dolman enough. So, uh, we know coming out in the second half, we're going to make our run. We just got to keep getting stops. And hats off to Charleston. They're a great team, but we just ended up getting more stops at the end. Cam, at what point in time did you guys feel the most confident? Before the final horn, of course. The most confident? Uh, I think we felt confident the whole game, before the game. I think uh, they beat us twice in the regular season, but I think I said it before, we're the defending, we were the defending Southern Conference champions, and we're not a cocky bunch, but nobody beat us. I mean, in, the, in March, nobody Nobody has beat us yet in the Southern Conference tournament in two years. So uh, I think we're confident a lot going into it. When the horn sounded, for sure, that was probably when we were the most, but confident, down four, down seven, up seven, confident group. In the third row. Cameron, speaking of that confidence, um, do you feel more confident going to the tournament this year than you did last year, especially given the experience you had? Uh, definitely, I think we do. Uh, I don't know if it's a confidence thing, because we were confident last year. I just think it's more of, you know, I just, uh, maybe we were a little excited to be there, and first half we struggled against Wisconsin, second half we were like, we belong here. So I just think this time around it may be a little different. We, 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 we think we belong there, and we know we belong there. To, show people around the world that we can come back back to back time. So uh, I just think it's not a confidence thing this year. I just think it's more of we've been there, had the experience, and uh, second time around, hopefully go a little bit. Awesome. Here in the front. Awesome. Um, awesome. Mike, expectations always tough to live up to. And coming into this year, people thought very highly of your club and what you could do this year. Some of the preseason picks already had you in the tournament before things started. Um, what was it like to meet those expectations this year? Rewarding. Um, and, um, you know, a tribute to these guys. That, that's, that's hard. I had a long conversation with Coach Ayers. Or really, he's, he might be as good as any coach in America. He's how hard that is to go back to back and the expectations and the dynamics change um, from one year to the next. And uh, this hasn't always been, you know, smooth waters, smooth sailing. We, uh, 
we had some tough times. Um, but I always knew that um, with great guys, um, if we could get to this tournament playing well, uh, that we'd have we'd have as good a shot as anybody, and that's that's how that's how it played out. Back to David. Yeah. Noah, uh, who is what is what are the Minnesota Mafia? It, it, it introduce us, introduce the world to the Minnesota Mafia here. Um, you know, it goes back uh, to the high school days. Um, even even I remember playing these guys uh, in fifth grade. It was a state tournament, fifth grade. They were on, on the Hustlers, uh, Minneapolis Hustlers, and we uh, we came to the uh, Twin Cities, um, brand brand small small town uh, team, and we got our uh, butts handed to us uh, by these Hustlers. And you know we grew up playing against each other, and then in high school um, we started playing with each other, and then we built our relationship. Um, you know. I came down two times a week to the uh, Minneapolis area. I practiced with them, uh, worked out with their coaching staff, and you know that bond uh, developed. And when uh, you know I, I, uh, I saw an opportunity, um, I, I brought it to Coach Young, and uh, you know I don't know why on earth you'd uh, you know take advice from a freshman at the time. Um, you know looking back and uh, saying hey you know I'm going to trust in this freshman and trust his word uh, that these guys are going to be something special um, coming down to Wofford. And, and uh, to accept them in the program because a lot of transfers don't work out. And, but I knew the character of these guys, and uh, I knew the relationship we had, and I knew what they would bring to this program. And, you know, you, could, you saw how special these two guys are next to me um, during that game. Their energy, their effort, their work on Goody Lock, their <laughs> willingness to take over in the second half. And, um, you know, the n name comes from... Um, a Howard Pulley, uh, Howard Pulley um, representative, uh, Errol Karlstrom, and he uh, nicknamed us the Minnesota Mafia, and it just kind of stuck a little bit, um, you know, because we're all we're all tough guys. Uh, being from the Midwest, you know, uh, we're not flashy at all, uh, and you see our game. Um, we're going to grind it out, and uh, it uh, it paid off tonight. These guys uh, paid dividends for these pro this program.